Hello, welcome to Lorbeck Luxury Cars. I'm Harry and on this edition of the Friday Drive, I have for you this uh, 2002 Lotus Elise. Released in 2001, the second generation of Elise was built to comply with newer, stricter European crash safety regulations. So with investment from General Motors, Lotus went off and built this new generation of Elise based on the very principles on which Lotus was founded, added lightness. But this pursuit of lightness does raise a couple of questions. So let's start off with the features. Now, to demonstrate what I'm talking about, this is an owner's manual from a similar vintage Mercedes. This has a total of 750 pages, which detail every last feature of the car. But when I come over here and I grab the Elise Lotus manual and you have a bit of a flick through, you'll notice that it's only 99 pages long. And you may say, well, they could cover quite a fair bit of stuff, but if you come around the back here, we have a page dedicated to operating that little reservoir there, a whole page. Actually, two pages. But the simplicity doesn't end there. In the middle, I've got a five-speed manual gearbox, no power steering, and in the back where the boot would ordinarily be in a car, I've got a 1.8-litre four-cylinder which spits out a dizzying 89 kilowasps. But the head scratching sort of ends there because this car only weighs, well, has a curb weight of 710 kilos. It actually gets from zero to 100 in just 5.9 seconds. And I'm told it handles like a go-kart, which I've always found a sort of slightly strange analogy because go-karts don't actually handle that well. I'm hoping it handles like 89 kilowasps. And because I've never driven a lease before, we're going on a journey of discovery together. So let's get in, throw away the script and figure out what's what. can't get in the bloody thing. Oh, there we go, we're in. Despite its diminutive size, I think it has a real presence on the road. There is no doubting the intention of this car and people seem to love it. So once you've wrestled yourself into this thing, what's it like? Well, as you can probably imagine, we don't have the Arab Boulevard right next to our place in Prohaski Street. So I've become a little bit acquainted with it on the way. And first impressions are, sort of, I guess it's a rare occasion where you come across a car which is exactly as you would expect it to be. It's very light, it's nimble. And as we explored back in the intro, it's got absolutely nothing in it. I've got a radio which is, could be out of anything. I've got a three knobs here which do air conditioning, which is a nice touch, and indicator wipers, that's it. There is nothing else. It doesn't even have wing mirror adjustments in here. You have to actually put down your window like this, like we're back in the 80s, and adjust it like that. Very rudimentary, but all in the name of lightness. And the reason you accept the absence of all those little luxuries is because being light makes it so much more fun to drive. So that's all good and well, but being a hand-built car made in England, you imagine it's probably pretty averagely built. But the truth of the matter is quite the opposite. Like we discovered a couple of weeks ago in the Evora, the whole chassis, since it's all bonded and glued together, is actually very rigid and very tight. It's a surprisingly solid feeling car. And when you've got the roof off and you've got the whole cityscape in your field of vision, it's a very pleasant place to be. I've absolutely no doubt that I'm back at Country Road you'd have a great deal of fun in this car. Along here, not so much. It's only, what, 50-ish k's an hour. So, there's only a limited amount I can do. And as you can see right here, speed cameras everywhere. So, let's just behave ourselves. And just sitting in the driver's seat here, you'd never know that it only had a, a rather puny 89 kilowatts of power because it feels a lot more than that and well the reality is it is quite a bit more when you take into consideration the weight of the car this car has a power to weight ratio of 125 kilowatts per ton which isn't a whole lot but it's more than enough to get this car really moving so when we consider colin chapman's idea of added lightness and you look at this car which is 710 kilos curb weight it occurred to me that at the moment, as a part of this whole system, 
I account for more than 10% of the weight of this car. That's quite extraordinary when you think, well, when you think that cars generally weigh quite a lot, they're fairly heavy things. But how they managed to make this car so light, I've got no idea. So if you want what is the most fun you can have in a car for the least amount of money, I'm afraid we'll have to wait until we get our next example because this pristine super low kilometre example has already sold. We'll see you next week.